If you've been wondering which iPad to buy, I have some good news for you. You don't need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars chasing the perfect iPad with the perfect chip or the perfect amount of power to start using Procreate or Morfolio Trace. What you actually need is an iPad that comfortably supports the level at which you plan to work right now. But to make a smart decision, you do need to understand something that most reviews completely ignore, which is how these apps actually behave once you start doing real architectural drawings. Procreate and Morfolio are not demanding because they are flashy. They are demanding because they work with large layered drawing files that stay live and editable over time. So instead of starting with processor speed, I start with file size. How big is a typical drawing? How many layers does it have? And how many of those drawings do you want to keep on your iPad at once before things start to feel tight and you realize you need to manage or back things up? That's where the math actually lives. So to keep this grounded, I use a single consistent starting point, an 11 by 17 inch canvas at 300 DPI. That size is my professional standard. And once you understand what that single canvas requires in terms of memory and storage, the rest of the recommendations fall into place very quickly. So why 11 by 17? Because in real professional practice, your digital work has to talk to the analog world. An 11 by 17 drawing is large enough to feel substantial in a casual meaning, and it's readily available on any office printer. Working at 300 DPI also means your drawings are crisp and printable at actual size. If you are drawing to scale, what you draw on the iPad can line up with your analog scale once you hit print. Now here's the part people don't usually think about. An 11 by 17 canvas at 300 DPI is a heavy file. It's not just the canvas size, it's how many layers you're stacking on top of that canvas. To keep a file like this feeling snappy while you draw, the iPad needs enough RAM. Think of RAM as the size of your drafting table. It determines how much you can spread out and work without boxing yourself in. And if your iPad doesn't have enough RAM, the app will literally stop you from adding more detail. So now that you've seen the math behind the files, we can move directly to the recommendations. If you are a beginner, and that's what I'm underlining here, you'll mostly be working on 11 by 17 canvases. You might have as many as 50 projects in your gallery with roughly 10 to 15 layers in each one. At that level, you only need a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM and a minimum storage capacity of 64 gigabytes. That means you can comfortably use something as affordable as a first generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro. On the refurbished market, those often sell in the 200 to $275 range. That's more than enough to get started and to do serious drawing work. Now let's move up one tier. If you're an intermediate user, you'll likely be working on a mix of 11 by 17 and 18 by 24 drawings. You may have as many as 100 projects in your library with as many as 30 to 50 layers on any given project. At this level, the RAM requirement doesn't jump dramatically. Four to six gigabytes is still sufficient. What does increase is storage. A minimum of 128 gigabytes gives you enough headroom so the machine doesn't slow down or start warning you about space. For this tier, a 12.9 inch iPad Pro third generation works perfectly well. This is the sweet spot for most people and once again surprisingly affordable. Now the top tier. If you are a professional user working at larger formats, your projects may include 11 by 17, 18 by 24, and even 24 by 36 drawings. You may well have over 100 active projects, and each project may include anywhere from 60 to 150 layers, depending on canvas size and complexity. At this level, you will need a minimum of eight to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and your storage capacity should be at least 256 gigabytes and often 512 gigabytes makes more sense. This is where a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with an M2 or M4 chip becomes the right tool for the job. On the current market, that usually means spending somewhere between $850 and $1,100. Now remember, you don't have to memorize this chart. All of this is summarized in a free downloadable guide linked below, including the table you're seeing here and the price ranges I found online. Now before we wrap up, there's one more important thing to talk about and it has nothing to do with performance, it's backup. Let me show you how simple this actually is because I really wish someone had shown me this years ago. I've lost work in the past when upgrading from one iPad to another simply because I didn't have a clear backup habit. The rule is very simple. If a drawing matters, it lives in two places. 
Active projects stay on the iPad. Finished or paused projects get exported as original Procreate files to an external drive. You're not flattening anything. You're not converting anything. You're just making a second copy. And once you do this a few times, it stops feeling technical and starts feeling normal. Now I've put all of this into a simple downloadable guide linked below. The reasoning, the math, the chart you saw before, and a short backup checklist. Now once that external SSD is plugged in, just go back to the gallery, choose select at the top of the gallery, choose the drawings you wish to save, and then press share, and be sure to choose the Procreate file because that will save all of your layers, all of your video replay information, and be the most complete record if and when you ever want to bring this project back to your iPad. So once the export window comes up, you'll see the choice to save to files here. And the SSD that you plugged in will show up on the left side of your window. In my case, it's the Work 2025 disk. And I'll make sure that's chosen. And then I'll hit save and off go those files into my SSD. And now if I want to, I can either eliminate them from my iPad if it's filling up too much, or I can keep two copies, one in the iPad gallery and the other in the SSD. But this is the principle behind why you may not need as big an iPad as you think you do. And it's easier than it's ever been to do just that. Don't forget to download the notes from this session to help you make your decision. And I've also included the original Procreate file of the floor plan you saw in this video. You can open that file on your iPad, study the layers, and even use video replay to see every step of the process at your own pace. Now, if you want to get started learning Procreate, click here. And if you want to get started learning more Folio Trace, click here. And I'll see you in the next video.